Rian, thank you so much uh, for jumping on here with me. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I know this is going to be an amazing session. I know a little bit about your story, but our audience doesn't. Uh, Rian, I know you run a, a whole entire country for Sandler, so maybe you could help our audience kind of understand a little bit more about you, uh, a little bit of your story, if you can. Sure. When you say a whole entire country, there's probably lots of Americans thinking, wow, a whole entire country. It is Ireland, with 5 million <laughs> people in comparison to over 300 million people. But yes, um, thank you for having me on. Um, not sure where you want me to go with this uh, in terms of telling you about San Ireland. I'll give you a bit of my background. Or I would love to hear your background, Rian. I just really think and there's you and there's Sandler. I think we, we'd love to hear about more about you first, and then we can dive sure. into the business side of things. Absolutely. Um, so I was born essentially into the Sandler life. Uh, my father he bought the first Sandler franchise outside of North America. Got to go back to 2001, 2002. Uh, so he's in it 19 years next month. So you do the maths. I can't work out what wow. year he bought it in, but I know it's 19 years next month. Um, so I've grown up with it for all my teenage years and into my early 20s. Um, three, four years ago, I set up a company called Don't Pink Seagulls. It's one of the 49 Sandler Rules, for any of your listeners who may be familiar with that. And it was a marketing agency that helped Sandler trainers fill their events more. And I built, I founded that, built it up, brought a partner in all over the span of about three and a half years, sold my remaining shares in that business three months ago and bought into the Sandler Ireland franchise to be a partner with my father. And then uh, as he, over the next decade, spans out, I'll grow more and more into that role. So um, right. that's a quick little background on me and how I got involved or how I've been involved in Sandler since 2001, 2002. Since, since practically you were born. I don't know how old you are, but... <laughs> 20, 27, 1993. Yeah, that's pretty much right into Since Sandler. I can speak. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's fantastic. Yeah. And then tell me more about growing up in, a, in an environment where all you hear is sales training. Sure, but I'm blessed with the upbringing I had. You know, there's tons of different small techniques that I wasn't aware of I was using in my younger ages, but now going into Sandler, such as reversing... Uh, mm -hmm. reversing never answer an unasked question sorry apologies right. on that one so yeah it, it was beaten into me from a young age not uh, beaten with a wooden spoon but more mentally beaten into me from a young age and, and I had the pleasure of sitting in on hundreds of presidents clubs I'll be honest the first three or four years it just sort of flew over my head I had no interest in it I was more there trying to impress my father but as as I grew older I kind of fell in love with the Sandler side of things uh, the first thing that caught my attention was the IR theory uh, fixing your money concept and yeah I don't want to sidetrack this, this whole podcast I could, I could spend two or three hours talking about help me um, but certainly from a uh, I'm financially independent and don't need the business that kind of standing position your money concept those kind of core values I got to have a hard say they went out uh, my father being involved in Sandler that uh, I'd be a completely different person today I want to ask one personal question maybe you and also sure. one technique that maybe we can share here uh, so when you went on dating, did you have an upfront contract with your girlfriend? <laughs> uh, when I, my current girlfriend now is, uh, that I've been dating for the last three years, uh, she used to be my boss okay. years ago. Well, you closed uh, so that no, one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I closed that one, yeah. Um, but no, uh, it, uh, she's familiar with a lot of the standard techniques and when she cops onto them, uh, which is maybe 40% of the time, I usually get a slap across the head saying, don't use that because I'm being you're not at work now. So right. I'm very careful if I do use them. Um, I am very careful. That's awesome. I was going to say, because we have folks that may not know all the different theories, if we can just maybe share the IR theory for, for those that are listening, I think it's so powerful. And I want to hear yeah, from you, sure. Rian. If, if I didn't know what that was, maybe you can share what it is to a person that's listening today. What is the Sandler IR theory. Absolutely. Look, uh, again, that's a whole day session. So I'll, I'll break it down. If you want to learn more about it, I'll provide you with a yeah. link that your listeners can click on to learn more about. But essentially, IR stands for identity and role. Uh, in life, we have several different roles. You know, um, I play soccer on the mm -hmm. weekend. Uh, I'm a brother. I'm a son. I'm a boyfriend. Uh, I am a work, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a business person, so many different people to different people, you know, and just because I am a useless rower does not mean I'm a useless human being. So separate right. your identity from your role because I had a bad day of calls in the office and I got a, a lot of rejection. Mm -hmm. When I go home to my girlfriend, 
It doesn't make me a bad person. So learn to separate the two and your life will change. Wow, that's deep. And also people do beat themselves up too hard, like you said, because you may have a bad quarter. Think about where we're in right now in a global yeah. pandemic. So does it make us bad at sales? Does it make the product bad or the company or whatever it is that we're trying to push out there? And I think that's a very, really important thing that I need to understand as well. Yeah, for sure. You know, I also think some of it is tied to, well, I'll, uh, 90% of it is tied to our upbringing you know that's a that's a core that's like the think of building a house the, the foundation is probably the most important element of it and uh, the underneath of the house that you don't see that's probably the most important part of it and that that think of that as your childhood and so in a sense your parents are to blame for some of the things that go through you through your head but uh remember I or identify and uh, identify and uh, identity and role separate right. the two completely and your life will right. change a lot of it comes down again uh, for me the biggest breakthrough that i had when i started studying it was people are people and mm. don't put an svp of sales on a pedestal in comparison to an account executive sorry i'm, I'm speaking from the from the SaaS world which is where i play yeah. but um the senior vice president of sales goes home to his family at the end of the day and so does the account executive. They do right. normal things like we do, just as celebrities do normal things. They have, like, if you meet, let's think of a celebrity, if you meet Will Smith on the yep. street and you want a picture and fans go crazy, you got to remember that that's just normal Friday for him. He's out with his family getting coffee. He's trying to live his normal life. <laughs> uh, translate that to sales. An SVP is no different than an AE as a person. So I think a lot of the not hitting targets for some people, comes from going too low in an organization. Separate your eye or and don't be afraid to go high. Because the worst, the the worst thing that happens is if someone says no to you, you can go down lower, whereas you can't go up higher. Essentially, it won't look good to you nowhere. If you've ever heard of Jill Conrath, she's a legend in the sales game. One of her stories that she uh, told was that. Uh, she uh, went low in an organization, got told a no, went over that person's head, went to the boss, went in to meet the boss. The person below saw her meeting the boss, uh, tore her apart and told her never to come back to the organization. And that's because she went above the person. Whereas if you rewind that, if Jill had gone higher in the organization and got told, hey, I'm going to introduce you to Cindy, who's below me, then Cindy would be opening to listen to her. So right. yeah, I don't know where I was going with that one, but certainly don't let a title scare you. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that's really good. SD, SVP versus AE versus SDR. Don't think SDR people aren't good either. Well, <laughs> Just because SDR they're an SDR. Gonna a, well, they're going to be an a, AE one day and they exactly. will be a direct, sales director the next day. So and they'll remember that, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, with that said, I was, you know, that's a great mistake that I think we can all kind of relate to trying to go into the CEO when you got to know from the VP. What are some common mistakes, uh, Rian, that salespeople make? I mean, that might be one that you do it without even knowing, uh, but any other ones that come to your mind? Yeah, it would. The rule is called spilling your candy in the lobby. And it would be where uh, when the deal's done, uh, you say something that can jeopardize the deal. Um, that's a, that's a big one. Uh, Another one is uh, not going through the appointment, which to expand on that is, uh, let's say you've got two hours every single day that you focus on cold contacting. I'm not going to call it cold calling because people might have different ways of doing it, but called cold contacting. Your objective in that two hour period is to set appointments. And that's your only objective. If you go off down different rabbit holes, having a conversation with people, you're doing your you're not doing yourself a favor because you could have set more appointments. So that's another thing that uh, people fall victim to is during that two hour period or one hour period or ninety minute period, whether you do it once or twice a day, do what you're supposed to do during that two hour period, which in my eyes is set appointments, get off the phone, and schedule another call. And it's easy to have uh, an extra 10 minute conversation with someone about something completely irrelevant or after you've confirmed the appointment, have a conversation with someone, whereas get them off the phone as fast as possible and get on to the next one. That's not to say everyone should be treated as a robot, but you're right. being paid to do a certain job. And I'm not, if anybody's familiar with the disc profiling, 
I have no D inside of me. So wow. I'm a people pleaser through and through. Uh, and I care about people a lot. And even I would say your objective in that hour, two hour period is to go for the appointment and get the appointments. And I'm happy to talk more about, you know, how you can create inbound leads from, you know, demand generation content and just giving a shit. But in that scenario, your objective is to go for the appointment. And I was going to say that sometimes you fall into that. Maybe this guy wants to talk a little longer. Maybe turn this into a discovery call and talk for 45 minutes and you lost your two hours of window. You know, that you would have done a lot more prospecting, a lot more appointment setting. So don't mix well, sales with, you know, appointment setting or prospecting. Exactly. I'd be fearful of that if a if it was dragged into a 45 minute conversation that it's actually gone from trying to set an appointment to doing lots of free consulting. Correct. That's true. They'll just take because advantage. It happened to me a couple of months ago and uh, I never, you know, did the research that these were in a contract for three years of people. And this person was happy to get free consulting to find out what his current contract could be doing better. And I wasted 45 minutes. Right. So uh, I have one other question too that just came to mind uh, because you're sure. in that Sandler ecosystem. Uh, we as salespeople, we talk a lot about the acquisition part, right? Getting more sales, getting more appointments, doing, doing the discovery calls, closing them uh, in a Sandler submarine. But we don't really talk about retention. You know, how do we go back and keep the, keep the book of business? And I don't think I've talked to a sales trainer enough about that. You know, what are one piece of advice that you can give? Because, you know, I like to believe that every account that you have is somebody else's prospect. So Bingo, you are right with that. <laughs> so how would we work on retaining that one piece of advice coming from a guy who's been introduced to this for 20 years? What would you recommend someone that's not just worried about acquisition like me? I'm also worried about it, retention. Yeah, sure. And there's a startling fact that I came across in the latest seller research center piece. Mm -hmm. And it was that the number one reason clients leave their current supplier and this is, this is a U.S. study. The number one reason why clients see their current supplier is because they're not happy with the level of support. Wow. And that is, in a whole year, that results in 62 billion U.S. dollars that companies lose because they don't have good customer support. Hmm. Unbelievable. So nail that. Nail that. You're doing better than 9 out of 10 people out there. No, that's, that's a really good stat. Where can I find that? Is it on Sandler.com? 62 billion. Yeah, it's on Sandler.com. The latest research piece. I'll send you... I'll, I'll, I'll send put it in the description. Yeah, yeah, I'll put it in the uh, description as well. So I have one last question for you. Uh, let's say sure. we're, somebody who is brand new starting in sales watches this episode or listens to this. What piece of advice can you give? Obviously, you have too many years of experience to name, but what would you tell somebody who's starting today Here's man. Here's here's something you should do or shouldn't do. Depends what organization they're in, but mm -hmm. Sandler aside, because everyone has their own choice of sales training. You know, I can't force you to uh, to like Sandler. There's there's plenty of others out there. Regardless of your choice, I'll give you my Sandler answer. But regardless of your choice, go for lunch with the top performing sales rep on your team or in your organization. Talk to your CFO. Talk to your SVP of sales and uh, you'll grow faster than everyone else in the organization. If you're willing to let go of your ego, uh, recognize that one hour of any sales training is not gonna solve all problems, that reinforcement is the key. And that's the piece of advice I would give. Let go of your ego, reinforcement is key, and uh, leverage internal assets, your CFO, your SVP, your CMO. That's massively important as well. Yep. I saw a startling statistic the other day of like how many S, uh, MQLs that were handed over to SQLs that converted to sales is as low as 7% in the mm. software industry, which is horrendously bad. You know, they're not qualified enough. And there's a whole argument around should marketing be paid a commission on closed sales so that they get paid a commission of $150 for a demo booking, but they get paid 10 for a white paper download. So they're more encouraged to get demo bookings and white papers. And then that statistic of 7% would rise. But right. yes, that would be my answer, regardless you're in Sandler or not. If you are a Sandler fan, uh, it am. would be 
to again reinforcement is one, but to get used to and fall in love with the solar submarine. Yep. Would you understand those seven key steps and elements? Uh, again, you are miles ahead of anyone else. Uh, I have it taped to my phone. Excellent. <laughs> and the reason is you, you just need a reminder. It's a simple reminder and you know where you are, you know, depending on the call, right? It could be third call, fourth call. I'm like, I, I got to find <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, but absolutely, I think that little things like that help a long way. Reinforcement. Yes. I, couldn't, I couldn't put a, any emphasis on that. And we do that just our own training for our employees. You know, everybody on board's an employee, but I believe that it's just the beginning. They forget everything they learn on that first day and about, you know, by the third week. So you got to do that again. So every time we have a new uh, employee, we take everybody and say, let's go through what we do here again. So it's reinforcement for everyone to make them better, if that makes sense. There, They're already good, but many, I think they could be big, better. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, there's not many things that uh, get under my skin. You know, I'm, uh, I'm okay with getting told no. I'm actually happier getting told no than being completely ghosted. But uh, the one thing that kind of, I've got an answer for it in my head, but it just confuses me that someone, I'll, I'll give you an example. The other day I, I was uh, in contact with someone from a large, well-known tech company and they were previously at another well-known large tech company. And they said, five years ago in my last role, I went through a day of Sandler training. I think I'm okay. I don't need Sandler training. I was like, you don't get it. Five years ago, you went through, okay, okay, we take a 21-year-old Tom Brady and say, hey, you're not allowed to play or train or do anything to do in American football till you're 27. Come back when you're 27. Is he going to be the same? Right, absolutely. Blows That's my amazing. mind. Yeah. But again, this whole <laughs> sales training industry wouldn't exist if it wasn't for people like that. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think uh, sometimes, like you said, we can get, uh, you know, we have the feeling that we went through some sales training sometime uh, in an organization. Maybe when you became a, a salesperson, they put you through three weeks or three months. And that is not sales training, in my opinion, because really sales is how to learn to talk to people, <laughs> how to communicate, how to respect you know, others just like you would want to be respected and just having that over and over you know, in your head, right? So and yeah. I tell you, uh, I'll forget Sandler if I don't keep doing this. <laughs> well, that's what we spoke pre hand We're, we're, we're right. going to help you out and make sure that you do. Absolutely. And Rian, any final thoughts? Uh, any final thoughts on uh, any of the topics that we talked about? What should sure, a salesperson yeah, there's, do? There's, Absolutely. Uh, there was something that came in my mind. You know, I was sitting there last night. I, I, I knew that this call was going to happen and I was writing down stuff going, what way is this going to, this interview going to be taken? And I have an iPad here and it was, um, I, I mentioned earlier on around money concept. Yeah, and how that important that is, even if it's just going in with the mind frame of I've got ten million dollars in a bank account, I'm mm -hmm. financially dependent, and I don't need the business. Right. That does not mean you act arrogant. And um, we were training a corporate client yesterday, and there was over fifty five AEs and SDRs on the training session. We did a poll with them all, and it was I'm looking at my iPad here, by the way, and it was around money concept that it was tick the box if you think this statement is true. 71% of those in the room tick the box that money doesn't grow on trees. There's this scarcity issue. Don't mm. know what their upbringing was like. You know, my upbringing was a normal upbringing. We're not mega rich or wealthy. You know, my father went almost to a bus in the first two years of Sadler. And, you know, so I'm not speaking from an arrogant position, but I think that if people can get that nailed, they'll be miles better. And a couple of ways to reverse that, that money does grow in trees is, you know, leverage your LinkedIn connections. They may be able to be, create referrals for you. Put out content. Word of mouth uh, is huge, you know, uh, to create inbound leads, whether it's video or anything like that. And then you tap into your raving fans. The last one I had of this is a statistic that, the average tenure of a sales leader in 2009 was 36 months. Wow. The average tenure of a sales leader in 2020 is 18 months. So it's cut mm. in half. Mm. So if you have a fan that is, let's say, a VP of sales and Salesforce, the odds are that they're going to be out of that organization 18 months from now, assuming they started today. Wow. So stay in touch with them. Remember what I said about the 62 billion lost annually? Support. Stay in touch with them 
And if they're a fan of you or Sadler or whatever your organization is, they'll bring you to every single other organization they have. Correct. It's happened to us. Uh, just doing a really good job over and over. Sales people, managerial roles, marketing people, they switch jobs. Could It could happen anytime, right? So it just doesn't fit yeah. anymore. They can move to another organization, but they want to work with the people that they had the best success in the past. They don't want to reintroduce new relationships. They don't want to go through the batting process. They'll be like, Rian, here's my new organization. Can you help us? And that's exactly what happened to us. A over and over. A, 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 a quick example of people are willing to play a safe option, which is why they'll bring you into the next organization. Next organization is, I don't know what COVID-19 is like in, in your part of the world, but in our part of the world, the government are very fast to introduce lockdown. Mm-hmm. In, in Ireland, there's five different stages. So the worst stage is five, which means total lockdown can't go anywhere. Number one is kind of flexibility. Pubs are open, everything like that. Mm-hmm. Not going to get into policies of all of this, but it's the government are very fast to bring us from level two to level four, but nobody's fast at bringing us from level four to level one because nobody wants to be the person who brought us from level four to level one and then we go right back to level five. Right. But anyone's happy to bring us from level two to level four because it's, it's safety. Again, translate that to the business world. And that makes sense why if you've got a Raven fan, they'll introduce you at every single company they bring themselves to. Absolutely. No, I think it's just being consistent. And like you said, being straight through to it and money doesn't come first, <laughs> you know, and just yeah. really focusing on that. And they realize that relationships are more important and more valuable. And that has introduced, you know, us to new companies that we weren't, we weren't even prospecting, you know, <laughs> we're like, Hey, yeah. Uh, and so that's, that's amazing story. Thank you, Rian, for spending a little bit of time with me. I really My appreciate pleasure. it. We're going to be chatting soon. And uh, like I said, thank you for all the what you what you do in Ireland and what you do for the folks in States. We appreciate it. And I think you have some resources on your LinkedIn. Do you want to just share that with the team, the, the team here, the uh, the video that you were yeah, sharing? Yeah, sure. Uh, go on to my LinkedIn. I'm not going to change it anytime soon. So your team or the listeners can go on my LinkedIn page. The link will be in the show notes. And uh on the tag section, you'll see sales series and leadership series. And that's where we upload every single one of our leadership podcasts in video format. Think Joe Rogan. Yeah. Yep. And every single one of our free monthly sales sessions, you know, email prospecting, objection handling, 30 second commercial upfront contracts, negotiating. We just had a 90 minute negotiation session. Um, so again, that's awesome. Well, they're updated every single week. There's new content there and uh, I won't be changing those links. So no matter if you're listening now in 2020 or 2021, uh, this is awesome. take advantage of that. Yeah, there's over 100 videos in the sales series alone. So thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate you putting out content. Uh, thanks a lot, Rian. I appreciate you a lot too. Thank you.